Well, the maniacs finally did it. Let's see how to role play with them damn dirty apes. <laughs> Old Man Grognard here, and today we got one kind of hot off the press, though it's been out for, oh, I guess a month or so, but uh, Goblinoid Games came up with Apes Victorious by Daniel Proctor with some help from Tim Snyder. Now, this is, uh, it came out this year, it's about 122 pages, and it basically lets you play in the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> that's basically it it's, it's uh, based heavily on the ape franchise um, you can play humans subhumans or apes um, and it's based on their house system which is also used with Labyrinth Lords, Starships and Spacemen and Mutant Future and I do have a bone to pick with them on this but I'll get to that in a minute it's a really well done system I just finished reading it this weekend here's the physical book like so, it's a, a digest size, so, you know, you, you're not going to get the big full book, but that's okay. It's still a complete game. It's got everything in here. Um, you've got classes. Um, basically, they're, uh, they break down as astronauts. Whether See, you either are crash, you either crash land as an astronaut or you're on the Earth in cryosleep that nobody ever woke you up and you wake to an ape ruled world this is like after the post-apocalyptic thing that um you know that they say the glaciers are finally receding because of what happened with the radiation and the apes became the dominant species um either there were humanoids that what they call humanoids which are humans that have kind of regressed to i don't know primitive state or there's the un, what they call the underdwellers, which are humans that went underground when you know the stuff hit the fan, and were li living underground, um, and they've developed into like a higher evolution, but they've also kind of like lost their humanity somewhat. So um, the apes rule. It turns into kind of a kind of a science religion feudal type society because their religion tends to like dominate over science. Um, they, they tend to think of it as one and the same. But anyway, that's kind of the background story. But you're playing, you, you have a selection of like, you can play an astronaut, you can play an underdweller, which is those advanced ones I was talking about, or a humanoid. Now humanoids are more like cavemen because they regress to like cavemen and they say you can't really teach them, you know, how to talk or, or use tools or anything like that. Although you can teach them some things and, you know, eventually they may get a little, you know, English. But they also have the option of having humanoid servants, as they call them, which is humanoids that aren't so dumb that can be taught things. Um, but that's an option. Um, they're also the, if you're going to, if you're dealing with the underdwellers, um, they are psionic. So you have a simple psionic rules, which I understand came from their starships and spacemen to second edition. Um, the combat is basically D6 group initiative, although there is an option for individual initiative, of course. Now the base combat role in here is a d20 roll, but you're rolling under most things, and you're rolling over on saves, um, which I find kind of interesting, because um, usually it's, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, you can also play um, apes if you want to go that way. Uh, there's what they call Bonobo agents, which basically take the place of like um, thieves, diplomats, and things like that, chimpanzee uh, scholars, which are the scientists, the bunch, gorilla soldiers, of course, and they also have um, orangutan uh, politicians. They're the ones that keep the, keep the, the place running, basically. Um, they're psionic combat, real simple. You only have like five or six like psionic powers to deal with, and it's... Uh, you know, it's basically you're comparing the psionic potential of each character. And if one is higher than the other, then the person who's attacking gets a minus. If it's lower than the other, they get a plus on a d20. I believe you're rolling 20 or less minus 
whatever. Uh, I may have gotten that wrong. Sorry, guys. Um, and it just, it feels real good. I'm not saying it's a bad game. Uh, I just have a couple of peccadillos with it, but I think it's a good, solid game. And they do give you ide great ideas to how to, like, extend things into a campaign. And they give you a great little uh, beginning adventure where you're a space team that crashed on Earth uh, because they got a, on this planet because they got a signal from another ship that had crashed earlier and everybody died. And you can't get off the planet because you need a certain part off the ship, which the apes have already taken. You got to go get it, da, 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 da. But it's a great way to start. Um, and, well, here's here's a couple of the, here's a couple of, like, this is how it's laid out. Really nice, tight, laid out, really clear. Everything's clear. Um, and there's some nice artwork in there. It gives you some feel of it. Now, you're, now, if you're playing a human or an astronaut or something like that, you're basically playing a 1970s astronaut because they're they're going heavily on like the original series, um, and that's okay. I mean, I don't mind playing it in modern day with astronauts who've gone through some kind of uh, dimensional warp or something like that because they basically play this is Earth far in the, you know thousands of years into the future. Um, but, you know, I don't have a problem playing it modern. You could probably play it modern very easily. Um, okay, conversions. Here's here's where it gets a little a little fuzzy for me. I read the mechanics, and they're good mechanics. They're solid mechanics based on BX like everything else. But they seem to want to... I mean, in the back, in the back there's a chapter adapting to Labyrinth Lord, Starships and Spacemen, and... Mutant Future. They seem to lean towards starships and spacemen for some reason, obviously because of the astronaut thing. But I would push it more towards Mutant Future, which I don't understand why they didn't. I mean, Tim Snyder was involved in this. I'm surprised they didn't. But then again, it's Daniel Proctor. So, you know, because in the back they have the, the conversions. Um, it gives you conversion, rather something of a meaty conversion for Labyrinth Lord. Uh, Mutant Future can go kind of that way, use the some of the Labyrinth Lord stuff. Uh, but Starships and Space really go, oh, no conversion needed. No problem. So they're really bang they're pushing a like a uh, Starships and Spaceman Apes Victorious crossover, which to me like okay. Okay. Here we go. Um Full disclosure, I never really got into the Planet of the Apes stuff, but that's not going to stop me from reviewing it because I also know some things that I don't like make good fodder for other things, and I think this makes good fodder. I wouldn't mind playing in a game or two, um, but if I was to use it in something I already did, I would put it in my Mutant Future game, I would make a section of the mutant future post-apocalyptic world that the apes rule. I wouldn't give them the whole planet. But I'd have that whole dynamic in some, like, say, I don't know, Canada or someplace like that or, I don't know, somewhere in, like, in Europe or something. But I, I just don't know why they're, they're uh, leaning towards the starship and spaceman thing just because there's astronauts in it. I mean, there are some guys who were underground in cryosleep and the cry they never woke up. Uh, you want to go? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, yeah, we're th I'm thinking Time of the Apes, maybe? No, 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 that was really bad. But, see, that's what I just don't understand about this. So, that's me, but you're going to get a lot. But as, as, a, as a role player, as a GM, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this book if you want to use it in something like that. Because it really is a good book. And I think it's one of the better efforts for, from Goblinoid Games. So I'm not going to come down on it real hard on that. I just wish that they'd had a little more, you know, kind of mutant view. I mean, you know, doing the, changing the to hit roll on here. Uh, see, I've never seen Starships and Spacemen because I, th for, for, I was going to go like download a no art version. I heard there was a no art version. I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to have to take their word for it. Um, I don't know why they just didn't give the armor versus AC thing that they have in like Labyrinth Lord Mutant Future. 
Um, I just, I don't know. But at the same time, they do give you a conversion. So go ahead and pick this up. You can find this on the, the Goblinoid Games website, of course. Um, Lulu, um, you can find the soft cover for $12.99. RPG now and drive through RPG. The PDF the PDF is four ninety seven, but I believe all their stuff is on sale right now. Soft cover is twelve ninety nine. Hard cover is eighteen ninety nine. If you want a combo soft cover and PDF, it's seventeen twenty one. Combo hard cover and PDF is twenty three twenty one. Check this out. It's it's a really solid, decent game. And that's my review of Apes Victorious. You go out and. Uh, Get them damn dirty apes, will you? And if you got any uh, thing you want to say about this, you can always get a hold of me at oldmangrognard at gmail.com. But until next time, bye bye <laughs>